What if I could show you how to double your speed of reading and double your comprehension of what you're reading as well? Would you be interested? If you are, keep watching. In my first video about how to read a book, I made the claim that if you use some of those principles that I gave you, and I gave you four tips, you will double your reading speed and double your comprehension and also probably begin to enjoy reading. A lot of people who have become readers were challenged by one man and his name was Mortimer J. Adler. In about 1939 and published in 1940, he published his book, his groundbreaking book, How to Read a Book. And I referred to it in the previous video. This is it here and you can see it's it's well worn. I have loved this book and I've drawn on it a lot. And the principles, as many people who have read this book have claimed, uh, are tried and true. So Mortimer J. Adler, uh, I will show you some comments about this, but <clears throat> have a look, uh, just consider this opening line of his book. He says this, this is a book for readers who cannot read. That may sound rude, though I do not mean to be. I may sound like a contradiction, but it is not. The appearance of rudeness and contradiction arises only from the variety of senses in which the word reading can be used. Mortimer J. Adler was a professor of law, and he was at St. John's College and also uh, at another university. And he found that there were law students who didn't want to read the required reading that he, as their professor, was assigning to them. And so they would come up to him and say, what, what chapter should we read in this? What's the particular chapter of the book that you're asking us to read? And he would say, I need you to read the book over the weekend. Big task for a lawyer, but as uh, many of us have come to realise, the the legal profession is a profession that demands that you're able to read. I'm the pastor of a church, and I would also say that being the pastor of a church with a heavy preaching burden, a heavy preaching load, also requires that you become a reader. Mortimer J. Adler set up a remedial reading class at St. John's College, one of the most prestigious colleges in North America. And he invited some of these law students to participate. Now, of course, that sounded almost insulting. As he said, he doesn't mean to be rude. But many people have, if not in fact most people, have not been taught how to read. Now, this book, How to Read a Book, has sold, I'm guessing, in the hundreds of thousands, quite possibly millions. It has been revised and rewritten. I showed you this book as well. This is the revised edition which he co-authored with Charles Van Doren. And in this one, he breaks down reading into four uh, phases. He, do, he does it in this, but in, in this one, it's very, very clearly four phases. And the four phases, you'll, you'll recognise the first couple. The first one's called elementary reading. That's simply where you're reading the words on the page. And that's all you're doing. You're just reading the words. And you're not really engaging with the book, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. You're not asking questions of the book. You're not analysing the book. You're just reading the words. So he says that's okay for very young children. But his concern is, and perhaps still should be, that many people have not been taught how to read in a way that goes beyond what he calls elementary reading. The next type of reading that he says as you grow in your ability to read, as you practice reading, is called inspectional reading. Now, I touched on this in one of my four tips in my last video on how to read a book. Inspectional reading is where you will look at the cover, look at the table of contents, you will look for information about the book before you start reading it. You will then skim through the book. You're particularly taking note of headings you're particularly taking note of paragraphs. Paragraphs generally should, if well written, take advantage of the, the, the reader's attention to, to draw out an idea. So a paragraph will generally introduce an idea, 
and the closing sentence will reinforce that idea or bring that, that to a, a, a tidy end. And then the next type of reading is what's called analytical reading. Now I mentioned this in my previous video where I said if you want to begin to read well, you need to engage with the book. Analytical reading means that you're asking questions, perhaps even critical questions. Questions like, what is the author trying to say? Do they say it? What is the author trying to prove? Do they prove it? Do they make their case well? That's analytical reading, and it's where you're able to evaluate the weight of arguments. In other words, has this person made a case, and do I agree with that case? That's, that's analytical reading. And then the final type of reading, which he says is the most advanced reading. And by the way, those first three types of reading. In the original book, uh, Mortimer J. Adler says, every good reader reads at those three levels at the same time. In other words, he opens up with this strange comment, every good book deserves to be read three times. And then he goes on and explains that every reader who has become a good reader will be able to read those three different ways at once. In other words, you'll be able to read the words off the page, you'll be able to get a gist for where the book's going, and then you'll be able to analyse whether the book has achieved its goal. The final stage, the final phase of, of reading, uh, Charles Van Doren, it appears, has edited this to, to make this cl even clearer than the original. And that is syntopical reading. Syntopical reading is where you're reading a number of books in a similar field. Now, of course, in the realm of medicine, in the realm of law, and particularly in the realm of philosophy and theology, this is going to have to happen a lot. Syntopical reading is where you're reading perhaps a book on the atonement, which is actually quite a controversial issue now in the realm of theology. And if you were to read William Lane Craig's latest book on the atonement, you, if you were to do syntopical reading, you would compare it with uh, someone else in that field who's written a book on the atonement as well. And you might see that, okay, these, these authors don't quite agree on everything. In fact, they disagree at some pretty major points. And so syntopical reading then allows you or enables you to have a number of different uh, books in the same topic, on the same topic, where you can now analyse together, where you can say that's a strength and a weakness, and that's a strength and a weakness, and here's now my opinion based on what this person says. If you go on to do advanced degrees, masters and doctoral level study, this is the type of reading you are expected to do. You are expected to be able to compare different types of uh, viewpoints on a particular field, syntopical reading. So here's my suggestion. In the original How to Read a Book by Mortimer J. Adler, he is the one who says use a pencil, and if you, if you haven't got a pencil, at least use your finger, and begin to point at the words. And he also says this, the, the brain can concentrate for about 10 minutes. So this is what you'll experience, and perhaps this has been your experience. You'll sit down in a room, perhaps in a comfortable chair, and you'll read, and you'll find yourself getting drowsy and, drow and drowsier and drowsier. Because after about 10 minutes, the brain is actually saying to the body, whoa, 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 time out, enough. I need to digest, intellectually digest, what I've just looked at. And this is where uh, Mortimer J. Adler suggests you might just want to stand up, sit down again, and keep going. That's what he says. In other words, teach your brain that it's going to have to get used to processing a bit more information, perhaps 10, 15 minutes. The other thing he's suggesting is bring a pad, a, a notepad. He calls it a legal pad. In America, the, the yellow pad with the lines on it, the legal pad. And take notes as you read. If you've got a, a to, he wouldn't have had sticky notes back in his day, so I recommended in my previous video that you engage with the book by writing comments on sticky notes, putting them in, and especially if you're doing advanced degrees and you need to be able to find where things are quickly in a book, that's a great way to do it. Now, you ask, thank you for asking, what about Kindle? What about eBooks? Those sorts of things. 
Well, you may not have yet discovered that in uh, the Kindle reader and in the, in the Kindle app, perhaps on an iPad or some kind of Android tablet or something, you can actually do the same thing. You can actually highlight text and you can add your own notes there as well. It's the digital equivalent of sticky notes and highlighters. So it's the same principle. So again, here's what I'm recommending, that you engage with reading a book, start off slowly. If you get through a page, great. If you get through a page a day, you've done really well. I hope this helps you to begin to grow as a reader of books, and I hope what I've shared with you will also help you to begin enjoying what you're reading.